what is up guys Fossey missiles here in today's video we got so much stuff we are doing to the ramp truck but look at I got these white uh, these lights up here wired in so those ones are all good to go and I showed you in the last video but these ones were all good to go so yeah just finish up wiring kind of a mess on this thing but it's done now I'm super excited we can get some diamond plate on this thing put some vehicles up here do some Last minute touches, final touches on the cab. And I'm thinking I'm gonna make a little hitch receiver for my license plate. And if I ever tow something, I can just pull my license plate off since I'm gonna be able to see it anyways. But here's my thoughts. So here's a scrap piece of a, what is this? Inch and a half, whatever it is, two, two inches. This slides in here like that. And I'll have this guy mounted just right up there because that's where my license plate light is, right there. And also I'm gonna have this little flat stock on the back side of my license plate to hold it in place and I'll just weld it to this. I gotta cut these down, of course. And then I'll have a sweet little, uh, little license plate mount. Also, I gotta shoot a hole in it right there. So I got this pin and when I need to take it out, I can take it out and it should be out of the way of everything. So that's what we're gonna do, let's do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld these metal nuts on the back of the license plate mount, which is this uh, piece of bar stock right here. And so it'll be super easy. I just gotta put a screw in the front of it to mount it. This little bracket I made actually came out pretty dialed. Let's go ahead and slide it in here and test it out. There's it. Here's the pin I'm going to use, just a regular one for towing. Let's slide that through. Okay, so now I'm working on the ejecto seat. So basically, if you guys didn't know, the motor is right here because this is a van front end. So the motor is right in between your legs, basically. Big old V8. But the issue is um, there's this giant fiberglass cover. Pretty huge, here's hand comparison. See how big this thing is? But that covers the engine so you don't die of carbon monoxide poisoning. And the issue is you can't really pull the cover off. You can see the size of it. Can't really pull it off with the seats in. I mean, there's, it's, there's a way to pull it back and then pull it up, but it's definitely not the easiest as you can see how tight it is in here. So I'm gonna be making the ejection seat. Basically, I went to, I was trying to figure out the best way. I was going to use wing nuts. I was going to use like these hood pin thingies. I decided not to. But this is the solution I came up with. I went to, uh, what is it called? Ace Hardware. And I got a bunch of these. Well, four of these. And I got a bunch of these little rubber gaskets or washers, whatever you want to call them. Just so there'd be no squeak. And I'm basically going to have these pins coming up through the floor. And then you'll just be able to slide the the cotter pin into them so they'll stay in place. Uh, should be strong enough. One of the issues is too, so the driver's seat actually bolts in perfect and the holes line up and everything is good like that. But on the passenger side, for some reason, uh, well, not for some reason, obviously they wanted to be more comfortable for the passenger so they made the seat further back. So the holes are actually further back than they were for the, pa for the driver's seat. So I'm gonna have to make a plate for the bottom which is gonna be fine anyways because I wanna make a plate anyway just to make sure it's super strong on there. I'll make a plate. Drill through the plate, got to weld the studs in place, um, and it should be all Gucci, but let's let's take a look at what it looks like right now. I'll show you if I can adjust this camera properly. All right. Okay, here's where the seat out. And here's kind of my idea. So, do you see the stud? Let's see, focus. Okay, I just shoved the stud through the bottom of where the bolts were at, where the seat used to bolt in before. And I'm gonna weld that into place, you know, in all four locations. And drill some holes, and hopefully this thing comes together nicely. And it should be strong enough. Like, I'm not worried about the seat breaking off or flying out or whatever. I mean, it had some rinky-dinky little bolts in it for it just being regularly mounted. And so I think these will do just fine. Carpet is cut to perfection. 
Ihn. Sparks started flying when I turned this thing on. And I don't know if you guys can see that right there, but it's all burnt right there and it's all hot. This wire melted too, it must be a short or something, but it's crazy. Okay, with just one screw holding this rear section of this cutoff wheel or grinder, or whatever it is, together I took it off and I see where the wire's jacked at, right there. You guys can see it, right there. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this wire and re-solder on some new points to it and we'll get her all back up and running again. And just like that, we're back up and running. Moving on to the next thing, let's work on a headliner. So as you can see, I have this curve on the front and then the back is like nothing. There was a piece right here that I additionally just cut off right now, uh, just cause I wanted more headroom. But yeah, it should be interesting how I'm gonna make this. I picked up this felt right here from Joann's Fabric. I got a ton of it, like three or four yards or something like that for $10. So yeah, that black felt's gonna work perfect. It's actually like a black gray color, which already matches a uh, part of the interior, but as you can see, I got it draped up into the position right here. It's held in by one of those clip pullers. I got some adhesive, contact adhesive, high strength. And basically, I'm just gonna spray it on there, mold it into place. It's cut roughly the same size. It's a little long, but we'll see if we can get it all tucked in. Okay, headliners, and it came out all right. It didn't come out perfect, but it came out good enough for the ramp truck. I went ahead and threw the seats back in it and this back piece as well. So it's ready to rock as far as interior goes. Um, I gotta clean it up still. But uh, everything's in and installed. Pretty happy with how everything turned out too. Back to the bed now. I'm gonna work on throwing the diamond plate back on. The plate is now screwed onto place. Hopefully it's the last time for uh, these last three pieces. That front one's gotta come off one more time when I finally order my winch and make a winch mount. But other than that, this should be like the last time of putting diamond plate on. I gotta clean it all off again and there's some dust and dirt and some parts I missed painting, but uh, super stoked to get these things on. These things are not light and it is hot outside so I'm sweating. Now I'm gonna be working on the battery tray. As you can see, this battery tray is eaten up by rust and it's completely destroyed. It usually happens on all older cars because the battery's been sitting there and been leaking battery acid all over it and so they get destroyed. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and replace that with this one, which is actually uh, rusty as well, but it's not bad. This came off the back of it and this was like an extra battery for, uh, or extra storage for the battery in the rear. I'm gonna go ahead and probably chop it maybe halfway or, you know, somewhere around there. But that guy in there, you know, weld it up in place. Probably make it removable. I don't know if I'll weld some nuts on the back side of this after I cut it all out. And we'll get that going. I actually also installed uh, this brake booster off camera, this brake master off camera, I should say. 
and it worked fine and then the other day I hopped in it and the front brakes were locked up and I ended up having too much brake fluid in here and that was that was the only issue it's kind of weird I did tap some stuff with a hammer just in case it freed something up but kind of weird so yeah let's get to working on this After doing some cutting and grinding, it is all smoothed out in there for the most part. Um, most of the old metal has been removed and the battery box has been cut. It actually fits in there really nice. Oops, okay. There it goes. So yeah, it's a pretty tight fit actually, but it fits good. Um, I'm trying to figure a way I can mount it because I want it to be removable in case I need to get to anything below it or anything to the side. I want room. I don't want to be dealing with this battery box right here. So what I think I'm gonna do is, here is a piece of uh, angled. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. Make a bracket for the side to sit right there. Like that, and then one on the other side. Shoot a hole in both of these and put a hole in the bottom of it. At the bottom of the battery box. Run a carriage bolt through so it won't you know, hit the bottom of the battery and break it open. And then we should be good to go because it'll be removable. And I would just like to use these holes, but I don't know how to get to the bottom of these. Like to weld to weld onto the bottom, like a nut onto the bottom of these, would be really difficult. So that's what I'm gonna do. So now with the holes drilled, I went ahead and put a nut and bolt through it so you can see the bolt and then the nut and I'm just going to weld the nut right here on the back side, put two tacks, maybe three tacks on it and it should hold it in place. Here's like a typical carriage bolt like I was telling you guys about, it's flat or you know, mushroom topped. And uh, so it shouldn't, you know, break the bottom or damage the bottom of the, the battery. These ones have Phillips heads on them so you can uh, have a way to tighten them. But yeah, so basically I'm just going to weld this on and then we'll be able to weld these brackets to the ramp truck. Now I need to put a hole in the bottom of this battery box. So I'm gonna find a good location for that. And with that nut welded on, go ahead and line it up. And there we go, just gotta tack this bracket on, take the box off, fully weld it paint everything and we're pretty close to finishing finish with this battery battery box. Okay, so there's two tacks holding this bracket on. I'm gonna go ahead and test fit it really quick and then fully weld it on, but super dialed looking. Okay, there's the battery box fully installed and it's really rigid. A little bit of movement, but not much. And it's removable, so that's cool. It's just two bolts. I think it pops right out. So we just gotta put it down, it's ready to go. Okay, so there's the battery box all completed and in use. So it holds the battery just perfect. I went ahead and painted where I ground down and welded those little uh, pieces of um, angle onto. And so I know that will rust. And this thing's super like solid in here. If you shake it, it does not move. It's like super solid and that's gonna be his final location. So I'm stoked on that. It's funny, a little project like this thing probably take like a half hour, but even still just doing all the measuring, all the little stuff, it ends up taking two and a half hours. So keep that in mind if you wanna build one of these things. <laughs> and check out what just came in the mail. Here are my straps. So stoked. I got these ones, I think they're called Vulcan or yeah, Vulcan straps or something like that. But they were 90 bucks and they look pretty heavy duty. They had good ratings. So, I got them. Also, they're like reflective at night too, which I thought was rad. I already have a car back on the ramp truck, so let's go ahead and test these things out. I'm super excited for these. They look rad. They look pretty beefy too. So let's try to strap a vehicle down with these. Yeah. 
So here's what it looks like all strapped in. I'm not sure if it's 100% correct on how you're supposed to do this. I read the instructions and everything, but it, they are, it is super tight in here. So I put these at 10 and two, and you can see I like it's biting into the tire basically. It's so tight. So I think it is correct, but I don't know. I've never done these kind of straps before. Really interesting, but yeah, you can see the, you can see that, there it goes. You can see like the indentation it'll put on the tire, how much like, how tight it actually is. So that's nice, I got my strap situation all figured out, and they probably take about a minute piece to put on. I mean, if it's a car yard now, like I know a Miata, so I can kind of get in, in, in there and in the fender wells behind it. I don't know, it should be pretty much the same for all cars. So yeah, it really doesn't take too much time to roll up and strap a car down. Um, I think legally you have to have a safety chain or some kind of safety thing running from the front to your uh, headboard or whatever or down there. But when I have my winch set up, it's gonna be my safety. So I'll have five points of connection in case this thing falls off. Uh, I don't know, hopefully, hopefully it won't ever fall off. But that's gonna be for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I only have a few more th videos left to shoot really on the ramp truck and then it's gonna be pretty much done. If you liked today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more car content. Thank you so much for watching.